Have you been wondering how children dresses are made, that they come out so cute, so beautiful? Are you a lover of children dresses? If yes, join me as we make this dress in less than an hour. My name is Ify and I'm the creative director of Ify Stitches Academy. So, we're going to start with our materials that we'll be needing. We'll start with our organza. Okay, so this is our um, decorated organza. So, we'll be using this decorated organza here. I folded it into four like a peplum already. I'll be using this to cut the bodies. So, we'll be using decorated organza. We'll be using um, plain organza we'll be using our satin we'll be using our hard nets a little bit of interfacing just to interface the small body so i have este here we'll also be needing our zipper we'll be using this to close the back then my pattern i have my pattern already this is a one year old pattern this is the front and this is the back so i also have like this peplum patterns I already have in different sizes because I make children clothes in lots I don't want to start drawing chalk on my organza you know, you know it's not a stable fabric or net or anything so I just make them down here and they are all graded so you can see one is bigger than the other then I also have my pattern this is my pattern front and back so it's like um it's for a one year old so i have it transferred sorry i have it transferred that's like retraced to a plain piece of paper because this is my standard pattern yes i also sell them it one to ten this is my standard pattern and I I won't be altering this particular one so I have to transfer them here so that we can alter this so that I'll always keep this intact so now we're going to go over to transfer our pattern to alter our pattern not transfer sorry to alter our pattern into the desired um, anything you want like your desired style okay so join me as we do that you also need your scissors you know we have paper scissors and then we have our fabric scissors then your pencil to alter your pattern okay so we are here to alter our bodies as you can see in the picture you can see a net here okay before we start the first thing actually is to alter your neck this is our basic neck i really don't want it choking the child so i'm going to go away from my basic neck a, a neck a little like this okay so then i'll also draw sort of like a slight a slight v like this for the front then i'll be notching here just make two notches so that you can always meet them up later. Then for the back, our back um, pattern already has a zipper allowance. Yes, this pattern comes with allowance already. It already has a zipper allowance of one inch. So now it's to alter the front. So you know, whatever we do to the back neck, it has to be, let me finish with it. So I'm also going to have um, Okay, I don't want to put in lotion. Should I put in lotion next? I'm thinking of how the back should be. Put in lotion net. Wait, um, that's white net, not really a lotion net. It's a white net. Okay, I don't want net at the back. So I'll just get my paper scissors and let's make our back plain. I don't know if the mom will be okay to expose the back. So I'm cutting off the back, the front um, neckline that will be reduced. And I'll be matching it 
with the back, that shoulder to shoulder. You know, they have to align, they have to be equal. So I could just slightly cut off this one, following, you could use your ruler if you know you cannot eyeball it well. So my back is just going to be my back. I'm not um, putting any net there. Let the net just be in front. So now I'll go ahead to cut this. So this is our pattern already altered. So what we'll be doing is to cut it on our fabric. So we are cutting on our um, organza, our decorated organza. One, one, this will not have organza, so it's just these two that will have organza. So we are cutting one, one piece each that unfold. Meaning, if I fold here, so this place is going to be unfold because it's our center front, so it will just come this way while this will come this way. So I will cut it out, then I'll also be cutting it on satin two two times or what do i call it two pairs that means on satin why this is on fold i will cut two times on satin why this is on fold i will cut twice that's two times so what we'll be having on the up is like three layers without our interfacing so we'll be having three layer one layer of organza and two layers of satin you will know why we are cutting the satin twice so i'm going to cut them it's not like a big deal it's just me pinning this and mm. cutting it, pinning it, but I don't want the video to be too long. So I'll be cutting it off the camera, then I'll also come and show you. Okay, let me just show you for the lower part. I'll be cutting this one, it's longer, 13 inch, it's 13 inches. I'll be cutting this one as a peplum. You know how we cut our peplum. I don't want my pattern pieces to get missing, sorry. You know how we fold our peplum? You fold your fabric like this, then you fold it like this again. So let's say it's big like this. So I'll be cutting one of these on the main fabric. That's this decorated organza. Then I'll be cutting that is with the 13 now. And I'll be cutting two of it on plain organza. So we're going to have plain organza under this decorated satin before we have our under the decorated organza sorry before we now put satin if you just put your satin directly under here you won't like the outcome so i'll be cutting them then this lower shorter one is just one inch shorter that's where i will now be cutting my satin do you understand so for this one i just use the radius of five meaning it's going to be bigger this dress is for a one year old, so I'm not using her perfect peplum size because I want to gather it a little and I don't want it bulky. That's why I'm cutting it on full circle. You know how we cut full circle? Waist divided by 6.28 to get your radius, but I'm, this radius is going to be bigger because we're going to be gathering it. So after cutting it, I will come back and show you outcome yeah well we're finished cutting it so let me explain them to you before we start to sew them okay so this is our front remember we separated it okay so sorry i'm trying to make sure you're saying it so remember we separated it and this is now what it looks like. I cut one of organza and then two pairs of satin, twice on satin. So you can see it. And then I went ahead to notch, you know this mark we made, I had, went ahead to notch them so that you will be able to match it. So this is my upper part, I decided to use illusion net to make it. So I'll also notch those two mats so that when we are sewing we'll be able to get them together. So I actually told you there's allowance on this pattern 
But why I added this allowance is because so that when we sew it in, it becomes how it was before. You understand? So um, that's the front. Then for the back, I also cut one in organza and two in satin. Okay, I just noticed that this part wasn't cut. Okay, so I cut. When I mean one, I mean one pair. Do you get? Because the two sides has to be there. You understand? So there are two here. You actually fold your fabric. I'm sure we know how to cut. Then that means I have four of these. So that is it for the front, for the upper part. So what we are going to do is, out of these four, I will take two opposite sides and I will iron ST on it. So out of this one, I will take one iron ST. You know, this is on fold. That is why I'm calling it one. So that is it for the front. We are going to iron ST on one of these and two of the back. Then I also have this hard net that I'm going to use to make my dress. This is 10 inch because my satin is 12 inch. So I don't want it to come longer than my, my satin. So I cut 10 inch. We're going to put it under the ball dress to make it stand. So now for the satin, I cut two pairs because one will be under the main organza under the all or, or under all the organzas why one will serve as the lining so i have two pairs here it's 12 inches why this is 13 inches but they have the same radius of five for the waist so i want to show you this is what i do i come here on this folded edge i make a notch like this i also come here on this folded edge and I'll make a notch. Then I will open. Then I will open the side. You can see that I opened it while they are still folded. I have a reason for doing that. I don't just want to come and slant here, open as my center back. So what I have here is actually two full circles. One will serve as the lining, while the other one will be the one under the organzas. So I also cut this. So what I have here is two set of organzas, which I have also done what I did to this. That's notching them and opening them. Then for this main fabric, for this main fabric, For this main fabric, let me repeat what I did for the satin and the organza. For this main fabric, you can see how it is that it is um, cut like a peplum. You understand? So, like I said, as it's still folded, don't release it after folding, after cutting. You notch here, and then you come here, take this two. You know why we are notching it later then i will just take one of the edges and open it it is now that you are meant to open it it is not later when you scattered it that you are meant to open it okay so this is what we have for the outer one okay so i think from here now okay did i mention that my illusion net i cut two I cut two so I will be able to turn the neck and I explained to you why I added this allowance I just added this allowance on the neck because I also added at the back so that they can rhyme so I just added it so that um, we can we can do what see so that we we'll use it to turn each other so I just want you to know that I cut two here that's what I'm trying to you okay so after interfacing my upper bodies we will now go back to the machine to start sewing okay so we're going to start the sewing process I told you this is a um, two you can see that there are two 
Let me remove my. Okay, so before I remove it, let me just notch this middle place so that I can also align it to the middle of the lower one. So I'll remove my pins. And open it so this is the upper part you can see so I said I cut two just to make it a little bit stabilized and my stretch is along here there's no stretch at all along here so I'm going to go to the machine I'll use another machine because I'm, I can't use white thread here so I'm going to use another a brown thread on another machine and just turn the neckline that's the only thing we do turn this neckline and trim the allowance so i'll do that later so let's start with the white i said we interfaced two back two opposite back like this and then one of the front so it is this one that we interface that we'll be putting our organza on so we're going to run the organza. Let me just do one. We're going to run the organza on a with a basting stitch. So if you like, you can use hemming gum to hold it down. But I would rather just use a basting stitch, which is like the largest stitch of your machine. And just run around the edge like this so that's what I'll be doing now okay so I decided to show you so now I have sewn here with a normal stitching um, width, length, sorry. So I've sewn it and this is what I said you should do. You trim it. So I'm trying to trim it. Then you turn it inside out. So if you are good with your eye, your pressing iron, you can go and iron it if you know you are not scared of the net. Another thing you can do is just to paste it down so that it will be working as one piece. So I'm just going to... Take it here. by big stick so I'm trying to hold everything as one So I have it as one now. You can decide to iron it or whatever you want. So for us to start sewing, remember 
we notched places so we should align to our notch and so so let me change my thread back to white okay so i've changed my thread trying to attach the yoke so you see I just attached it now with my normal allowance so, so I'll bring the this part and so you see why we have to satin now right one was under here why one will serve as the lining so it's not a big deal they're just small pieces so it's not a big deal for you to use quality fab quality materials so so this is my real stitch now like a permanent stitch so i'm making sure that this is not folded on that that's why you see me raising it up i'll still confirm Okay, so this is how it will look. So now what I'm going to do, you know, whenever you sew a curve, you should notch. So I'm going to notch it. Please don't cut through your stitches. And then I'll understitch on the lining. Okay, so this is the front. Always trim all these things. They are not nice for your client to be saying them. So I can take it to the iron and press, but I'll press it when I'm done with the back. So let's go over to sewing, sewing the back. So this is what we have so far. So this is what we're trying to get right you know i said the stretches are long here so when it stretches this is what you do so let's do the back let's do the back let's do the back let's do the back okay before i start i always like to put my label before i forget so if you have a label at this point just fix your label. Remember, arm hole is here, zip is here, so don't go towards the edge. So close. And up here. Okay, so I'll just take this to this, right? I'll sew along the neck, but I won't get to the zipper parts. How did I forget this? I 
See, I got the zip and I left that allowance. So let's hold the other side too. Okay, it's looking like the same thing. So I'll also start at the shoulder. I said you slash always um not your curve so that you can lie down flat. Okay, so I'll understand. Also on the stage. Can I give you a clearer view of what it looks like? So I just understitched. Cut off all the excess thread and everything. So I'm going to be joining the front to the back. along the side so if you want to put belt now is the best time for you to insert your belt here but i'm not putting a belt so i'm just going whatever seam allowance you get when you're drafting your pattern or why you're adding your Okay, so now that I'm done with the upper part, not done like done with and this I've ironed it the inside, I've given it a good press and it's just the sleeves. Then I'll I've said I'm done. So now this is the down, the lower part of the dress. Excuse me. So this is the lower mm -hmm. part of the dress. This is what I have done. I have put the main four layers mm -hmm. together. So what are the four layers? We have um, we have one layer of the decorated organza. I have two layers of plain organza. Then I have my satin. So from outside here, you will see how it looks. Can you see how it looks? That I did not uh, put it direct. Imagine if I just came and put it under the satin. The difference is the look will not be nice. So I'm going to be using, and then I pin them along the places we notched. Can you see? I pin them together. So you will know what those things are for. So we're going to gather this waist because it's obviously wider than the baby's waist. So leaving my one inch for um, zip, I'll start gathering. You know we only pinned where we notched so every other place you have to make sure you are catching four layers when gathering you have to make sure you're catching four layers
together. So now I'm going to be gathering the four of them at once. That's why I sew them at once. So from experience, it's easier to pull the bobbin thread, that's the lower thread. It's easier. You won't get all those stories off. It cuts, it cuts, it cuts. So it's time to attach the up to the down. I'm attaching only the main fabric. Don't attach the um, lining yet. I'm attaching only the main fabric. So I'll pin the first notch to this side seam. It's going to make your your flay balance. It's not like uh, you now have more on one side than the other side. Then, let me turn this way. I'll pin this middle to this middle. Then I'll pin this last one to this place. So now we're going to sew. We're going to sew. So you try to arrange them for them to be even. You spread them if you have over gathered like I just did. You spread them and I'm aligning them to the edge. So our dress is coming up. I always like to put a sash here, but the inspiration has no sash. So you can see it. So what we we'll do, remember that our flare. Remember that when we're cutting this satin, we cut two. It's because the other one will be attached to this lining here. The other one will be attached to this lining here. But before we attach it, I'm going to I'm going to mark one inch. I'm going to mark one inch on this place. That's where we'll be putting our hard net. So and I'll be doing it on the wrong side. I'll mark it. I'll mark it. I'll put my hard net before I come and attach it to the waist. Just the way we attach this one. Pull the way we attach these four layers. So that's what I don't want the whole video to be long. So I will come and attach it to the waist of the lining. You see that we didn't, we didn't take it. So we'll attach it to the waist of the lining. So I'll show you when I'm done. So let me just show you a little process of this. So this is the lining of the flare, the lower, the lower part. So I'm just taking my hardness and pleating it about one inch away from the waist. One inch away from the waist. So I will do this till the earth till I get to the end. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just splitting it. Just wanted to show you part of it. So while I continue. <laughs> okay, so this is what we've done so far. So I said we're attaching it to the lining parts. So I'm just going to pin the way we pinned before. I don't need to start gathering this one because it's inside. I'll just split it. That's split the lower part to align with the upper part. The, the excess is not too much. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just taking the notch to the appropriate places. Just to have even.
okay so let's sew this one just the same way we did the upper the uh, the outer side So the small excess that you can see, I will just do one or two tiny pleats in between and we zoom up. Okay, so let me give you a, just a preview of what we've done so far. You can see how it's coming out. Hmm? I mean, sort of like go far so that you can see. So, what is left is just for us to fix our zipper and our sleeve. So, let's fix the zip right now. Okay, so I'm going to be switching my zipper foot. I'm using this side first. And this is the zip we're going to be using. So, this is how I want to show you how to. You know that we did not, um, when we're sewing the neckline, we did not go to the zipper allowance. So we're going to be fixing this here. Taking as much as you want. Okay, so taking as much as you want. I think this is okay. So I'm going to start from here. And I'll sew my zip. So I'm going to show you how to sew this zip neatly. And you'll be proud of yourself. You know, this is a flay. You see it going this way. So try to straighten it so that the flay can also... And for this lower part, you make sure you're catching the four layers when inserting your zip. Make sure you are catching the four layers. So I'm getting towards the end. I will tilt it a little bit like this. Okay. That's one side. So I'll change to the other side. I change my foot to the other side and you don't just start fixing it. Remember we did not it's not um you can't really tell where I started from. So what I will do is that I will zip this you see I'll zip this then I will take my pin and align it to this waistline. Sorry, this zip is looking <laughs> like it's bad. Okay, so it doesn't 
go off after I've sewn. So I'll align it to the waistline like this. I'll unzip it. Come back here. I'll come to this other side. And then I will align this pin to this side. Can you see? So now it's time to sew this other side. Just have to make sure from here to here is flat. Then you start sewing. You get flat like this. Tilt it a little. So now let's close our zip. Before you do any of that, and confirm this thing I want to do. Don't just go ahead and continue. So I'm going to zip and you see this is what I was trying to achieve this zip on the same line you get the head will take care of itself when we turn it it's not now you confirm the top so the dress is coming out Okay, so let's complete our zip. I'll come down here and close here. So the hem of this gown, I'm going to be weaving them. The four, the five layers, in fact. That five layers, I mean, the well, pattern organza, two plain organza, two plain satins. So their edges, I'll be weaving them. If you have that one inch crinoline, you can as well just use it to turn one of the layers, one of the satins, either the less than. So because I'll be weaving them, I would like to just catch them separately. It wouldn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to be sewing it at once. You can see I've not yet cut my zip, but don't cut your zip yet. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm turning with the nylon lining I said nylon. I'm turning it to the lining and sewing it so I can now cut are you seeing so I'll do the same thing for the other side but before you close here confirm that the zip are on the same level so see here it looks higher than here so i'll come down here a little i don't know if you can see what i'm showing you I'll come down from here just a little 
so that they can be equal. So these are the little, little things you should always watch out for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will only take extra few seconds or minutes for you to have a good job. So you see, they are now on the same level. So it is at this stage. Why is this zip doing me? The more you look, the less you see. It is at this stage you will now close your zip. So I'll be sewing down here. So arrange it well. Okay, why you do like this? You see this excess here? Yeah? Reduce the bulk so that when you turn it, it will not be bulky at that side. So I'll close the other side. So we'll now close the lower part of the line, you can see. So I usually close it deep separate from the net. Close it on its own, then you close the net on its own. So So lastly, after this one, before we fix our sleeve, I will close it at the waist. You know the waist, the lining is separate from Okay, so you can see that it's just remaining to weave the down. Let me get a better view. It's just remaining to weave the down and then put our sleeves. So this is what we've done so far. So before we go on, or rather before we forget, you know this is how the inside looks like. The lining and the net are one side, why this? So the whole inside where our work is is showing, which should not be so. So we're going to be closing it. It's not like everybody should have access to where the whole drama went on. So I'm going to be closing it like this. Matching side seam to side seam. It's not bulky. You see that the whole flare Maybe not to be bulky. How much side seam to side seam? Please, this matching is very oh. compulsory. Center to center. Center to center. And the other side seam to the other side seam. So for the sleeve, it's just a puff sleeve. I'll just cut it with my puff sleeve pattern. So I have all these patterns for sale for children in 1 to 10. So you can send me a WhatsApp message if you're interested. 
in getting one if you know you want to really go into children ways because you have to be consistent with your sizes when you're doing children wears if you say this is age four let your age four always be age four so now i'm going to be sewing this what's that i'm going to be sewing this So it's time for the sleeves, for the sleeves, for the sleeves. So if you want yours fuller, these organs that you can make it four layers, five layers, as much as you want. So I'm going to get my sleeve. I have the pattern, so I'll just cut it on plain organza and come and fix it here. It's a puff sleeve, so we we'll just gather here and also gather the mouth. Okay, so this is all I've done so far. I've weaved the down. You can see everywhere is woven. Then I fixed one sleeve. So I'm going to be showing you how I fixed this um, puff sleeve now. So we'll be fixing it on this other side. So let me show you. Okay, so this is the sleeve. This is what it's made up of. I doubled the organza for the puff. So why I doubled it is because I really want that puffy thing. So the only way to achieve it is to have like two layers of organza. And as you can see, one is about one inch shorter. Can you see? so the same up so this is how one is like just the normal shape of a puff sleeve so it's just shorter on the length why it's shorter is so that when we gather here and hold here it will still have that puffy look the shortness of the inner one will give the outer one a puffy look then i also have this to hold it like a band on that day so this is how we're going to get it i'm going to hold this lower part with a basting stitch because we'll also be gathering it to a puffy stitch So I'm leaving excess rope for the sake of my gathers. Then I'll come up here and also align them and gather together. Okay, so you can see this one that is longer, it's the outer one. You can see the excess, right? So no matter how you stretch it, this puff will always be there. So I'm going to gather here to fit into this place. So let me also baste this down. So 
some folding in. Okay, so I'm going to gather here. You mark the center of here, mark the center of here, and gather it to fit in it. So, normally I would have notched it. So this is my center, and this is my center. So I'm going to pin it here. Okay, when you are pinning like this, let's make sure make sure this outer one is here so that you don't put your allowance on the outside the longer one you know i said the inner one is shorter so make sure you're doing it rightly like i just did now so before i even do let me mark my up because once i gather i might not be able to mark it correctly i think i could just put a pin there So I'll gather this to fit into that one. To fit into here. I'll gather here. also to fit into here then we'll just sew it together not with a basting stitch now with a real stitch i'll sew it with half inch seam allowance and arrange your pleats, spread them well. Okay, see so what I have now. This is what I have now. So before I fold here, I want to weave here so it will not be difficult for me later. I'm going to weave here, then I will fold here. So let me just explain the remaining parts. After weaving here, I will fold here like this. I will sew and weave. Do you get then I'll just gather here into this place. You understand? So by the time I sew here, I will now gather here to fit into this place. So that is how we came about the sleeve. Then make sure every other thing is neat, weave it very well, or you use crinoline to turn it. Thanks for watching. And this is the final picture.